everyone. So in the last session, we studied about cell membrane, cell wall, endomembrane systems such as endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi apparatus, lysosomes and vacuoles. So in this session, we will learn about the rest of the organelles of this chapter. So let us begin with mitochondria first. So mitochondria is present inside the cytoplasm of the eukaryotic cell. And if you look at mitochondria, it is a sausage shaped or cylindrical shape having a diameter of 0.2 to 1.0 micrometers. Now, mitochondria is a membrane bound structure with inner and outer membrane. And inside the mitochondria, it is filled with the matrix. And if we talk about the outer membrane, so outer membrane of the mitochondria forms the boundary of this organelle. And if you look at the inner membrane of mitochondria, it forms a number of infoldings. So this folds that you see inside the mitochondria, this forms the inner membrane of mitochondria and it is called as cristae. Yes? So mitochondria, it is a site for aerobic respiration means it produces the cellular energy in the form of ATP that is adenosine triphosphate which is required for the proper functioning of a cell. For this reason, the mitochondria is also called as the powerhouse of the cell because it produces energy. Now, apart from various enfoldings, the outer membrane, inner membrane, it also possesses a single circular DNA. And for this reason, the mitochondria is also called as semi-autonomous organelle. Semi-autonomous organelle because it possesses its own DNA apart from the nucleus. So now let us begin with the one of the most important organelle of a plant that is plastids. So yes, plastids are found in all plants and euglenoids and they also bear some specific pigments which impart specific colors for the plant. They impart specific colors. And these pigments which are present inside the plastids, those are chloroplast, chromoplast and leucoplast. Now if we talk about the chloroplast here, so chloroplasts contain green colored pigment which is called as chlorophyll and it is essential for the photosynthesis that takes place in all the plants and euglenoids. Now if we talk about the chromoplast, Chromoplast contains the fat soluble carotenoid pigments such as carotene, xanthophylls, which are present inside the chromoplast. So, if we talk about the leucoplast, so leucoplast, as you can see here, are the colorless plastids with stored nutrients. So, they are of three types. First one is the amyloplast, which store carbohydrates, for example, potatoes. It stores carbohydrates, for example, potato. And next one is the elioplast, which stores oil and fats, oil and fats. And third one is the alluroplast, also called as proteroplast. It stores proteins inside them. It stores proteins inside them. Now these all constitutes inside the plastids. So chloroplasts are found in the mesophyll cells of the leaves. And various morphological studies have found that, that the chloroplasts have two membranes. First one is the outer membrane and second one is the inner membrane. And inner membrane is less permeable as compared to the outer membrane. Yes? So now, inside the chloroplast, the space is limited because of the presence of stroma. And inside the stroma present here, there are various flattened membranous sacs which are present and they are known as thylakoids. Now if you see the structure, these thylakoids are stacked on each other which is forming the granum. And the function of the granum, granum here that it provides the better surface area for absorbing light during the process of photosynthesis. It is for absorbing, absorbing light. Now these, stroma, these granum which is present inside the chloroplast. Now they are joined together with the help of stroma lamellae. And apart from the presence of granum and thylakoids, stroma also contains various enzymes which are required for the synthesis of carbohydrates and proteins. And it also contains double-stranded DNA 
and ribosomes. And for this reason, the chloroplast is also known as the semi-autonomous organelle. Semi-autonomous organelle because it possesses its own DNA like mitochondria. So in 1953, a scientist named George Pallid. Now, George Pallid was observing cells under the electron microscope. And he saw that there are various granular structures which are present in the cytoplasm of eukaryotic cells, which are known as ribosomes. And ribosomes are present both in plant and animal cells. Also, ribosomes are composed of RNA and proteins, and this is not a membrane-bound organelle. So, in case of eukaryotic cells and prokaryotic cells, the subunits or the units of ribosome is different, such as in eukaryotic ribosomes, the uh, sorry, in eukaryotes, the eukaryotic ribosomes are 80s, which is further divided into 60s and 40s subunits, and in prokaryotic ribosomes, they are 70s, which is divided into 50s and 30s subunits. Now here S stands for Swedberg's unit. Swedberg's unit, which is the measure for the size and density of a ribosome. Now, ribosomes are composed of two subunits, the larger subunit and the smaller subunit. And these two subunits join with the mRNA to produce or to translate, I would say, various protein chain due to from where the protein is synthesized. So it is basically the site for synthesis of proteins. Now, ribosomes are present on RER, that is rough endoplasmic reticulum. It, they are also present in the cytoplasm. And they are also found in the mitochondria. Also found in the mitochondria. Now let us study about the cytoskeleton, which is the network of filamentous proteinaceous structure present in the cytoplasm. And cytoskeleton consists of microfilaments, intermediate filaments, and microtubules. And together they form or collectively known as the cytoskeleton. So the function of cytoskeleton in the cytoplasm is to provide support, motility, mechanical strength, and it also aids in the intercellular transport of fluids and in maintenance of the shape of the cell. So, cilia and flagella are the hair-like outgrowths of the cell membrane and they are responsible for the movement of either cell or their surrounding fluids. Now, among cilia and flagella, flagella are longer which are responsible for the cell movement. So, the structure here you see is flagella and the another structure that here you see is the cilia. Now, cilia and flagella are covered with plasma membrane outside their structure. And inside these structures, their core basically, they possesses the exoneme, which is the arrangement in 9 plus 2 array. Now, what exactly it means? It means that there are 9 doublets of radially arranged peripheral microtubules, which are, here you will find, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So these are the 9 doublets of peripheral microtubules and also a pair of centrally located microtubules. In the center you will find a pair of microtubules. Now these 9 doublets are attached to the centrally located microtubules with the help of radial spokes. Let us now decode centrosome and centrioles, which are the unique feature of the animal cell. So centrosomes contain two cylindrical structures, as you can see here in this image. These are known as centrioles. And the placement of these centrioles are that they lie perpendicular to each other inside the centrosome. So we are talking about a structure that is centrosome under which, sorry, in which the centrioles are located and they lie perpendicular to each other. Also, they are made up of nine evenly spaced peripheral fibrils. Here you can see that they are present in the triplet form and they are nine in number 
and also they are present on the peripheral area made up of tubulin proteins a special kind of proteins which is called as the tubulin proteins now the centrioles from the basal body of cilia flagella and the spindle fibers they form a spindle apparatus yes so this is the spindle apparatus you can see you can find it inside the cell so this is a single cell in which you will find the spindle apparatus being formed on the two ends yes so these are the centrioles which are arranged on either side of the cells now the function of these centrioles is to pull the chromosome so these are the chromosomes here you see where i am pointing these are the chromosomes so the function of these centrioles is to pull the chromosomes in the process of cell division so now the single cell will divide into two cells with the genetic material in both the cells now one of the most important organelle again in the eukaryotic and both prokaryotic cells is the nucleus so it was first described by robert brown in year 1831 and eukaryotic cells generally have single nucleus as you can see in this picture now if we talk about the morphological structure of nucleus it is surrounded by a nuclear envelope which acts as a barrier between the contents which is present inside the nucleus and the organelles present outside the nucleus in the cytoplasm so here it has inner and outer membrane and if you see this picture the outer membrane is connected to the endoplasmic reticulum or we can say the rough endoplasmic reticulum because it bears various ribosomes on it you can find it in this picture so at some points these two membranes we are talking about the inner and the outer membrane diffuses at various places to form the nuclear pore and the function here the nuclear pores provide is the two way movement two way movement for rna rna and proteins means the rna which is inside the nucleus will go outside from this nuclear pore and the proteins formed outside the nucleus can go inside the nucleus with this help of a nuclear pore now inside the nucleus nucleoplasm or nuclear matrix is present so this nucleoplasm contains a spherical structure you see here which is called as the nucleolus now if you look at the structure of nucleolus you will find that it lacks a membrane and it lies continuous with the nucleoplasm here yes and also nucleolus is the site for synthesis of rrna that is ribosomal rna now inside the nucleoplasm you will find the fiber like long structures which are called as chromatin and in the chromatin it contains dna and various histone proteins it contains dna and various histone proteins so now when the cell divides these chromatin which are present in the nucleoplasm they condenses to form a rod like structure you see on the left side and the structure is called as chromosomes now inside this chromosome you see here this is this chromosome structure now in the chromosome the dna threads are distributed all along so dna threads like these are present all over inside the chromosome and we know that dna is the genetic material of our body yes so dna are present or distributed like this in whole chromosomal structure so also it has a centromere you'll find that centromere is the middle structure we are talking about centromere means what a structure which is present in the center yes but and this cytomere uh, centromere structure is surrounded by the disk like structure known as kinetochore now the structure on top of the kinetochore which you see this structure basically gets pulled with the help of centrioles you have studied it in the earlier topic in the centrioles that centriole helps in the cell division that they pull the chromosome while in the process of cell division so basically this structure gets pulled during cell division yes 
and the genetic material gets distributed when the process takes place. Now, parts on the either side of the centromere are the arms of the centromere. It's a chromosome, sorry. So these are the arms of chromosome. So we studied till now that this structure forms when the chromatin present in the nucleolus condenses. It forms chromosome which contains DNA as our genetic material and in the middle it has a structure which is known as centromere and on side of these centromeres present the kinetochore which gets pulled during the cell division with the help of centrioles. Yes. So now based on the position of this centromere we are talking the chromosomes are classified into metacentric, submetacentric, acrocentric and telocentric. Now, if you look at this image, if you talk about metacentric, you'll find out the centromere is in the middle of a chromosome. So, the placement in which the centromere is in the middle, that type of chromosome is known as metacentric. And if you'll see the centromere in near the middle, means it is not in the middle, but it is near the middle. Yes? So, this kind of arrangement of centromere is known as submetacentric and if you uh, look at the acrocentric here now in this centromere is towards the end towards the end yes in all these structures we are talking about centromere only the placement of the centromere so you'll find out that in acrocentric the centromere is towards the end and if you see the telocentric structure of the chromosome you'll find out that centromere is at the end, yes, at the end of the chromosome. Microbodies. These are the many membrane bound minute vesicles which are known as microbodies and basically they contain various kinds of enzymes and these microbodies are present in both plants and animals such as glyoxisomes and peroxisomes. So the function of these microbodies are to convert fatty acids into carbohydrates and they are also involved in the detoxification of peroxides. Peroxides, sorry. So yes, in this session we studied about mitochondria, plastids, ribosomes, cytoskeleton, cilia and flagella, centrosomes and centrioles, nucleus and microbodies. I hope you understood this topic well and I'll see you in the next session. Thank you.